oxidative phosphorylation. In the oxidative phosphorylation, we are going to talk about the formation of ATP and the sites of ATP synthesis. During the transfer of electrons through the electron transport chain, energy is produced. And this energy is coupled to the formation of ATP by phosphorylation of ADP by an enzyme FOF1 ATPase. And the phosphorylation of ADP into ATP is coupled with oxidation of reducing equivalents. Therefore, the process is called as oxidative phosphorylation. So, there are totally three ATP synthesizing sites of the electron transport chain. Site 1 is between NAD and coenzyme Q that is complex 1. Site 2 is between coenzyme Q and the cytochrome C which is complex 3. And site 3 is between cytochrome C and oxygen that is complex 4. So, ATP synthesizing complexes are in the electron transport chain they are complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4. Complex 2 is not producing any ATP. So, these sites provide energy required to make ATP from the ADP by an enzyme FOF1 ATPase. So, note an important point here that there is no ATP formation at the complex 2 and the energy which is liberated at the site 1 which is called as complex 1 is used to synthesize one ATP molecule and at the site 2 it is also used to synthesize one ATP molecule because the four hydrogen ions which are pumped into the intermembrane space at the complex 1 and complex 3 and the same hydrogen protons are pumped back into the mitochondrial matrix by the concentration gradient produces ATP molecules. So, whenever four hydrogen ions which are protons whenever they are pumped back into the mitochondrial matrix due to their electrochemical gradient produces one ATP molecule that is the reason complex one produces one ATP molecule complex three also produces one ATP molecule. Now, let us talk about site three which is called as complex four. So, the complex 4 which is known as site 3 of ATP synthesis is used to synthesize only half ATP molecule because the complex 4 is responsible for only pumping of two hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. When these two hydrogen ions are uh, kicked back into the mitochondrial matrix because of the uh, proton gradient which has been created because of the electrochemical gradient only half molecule of ATP is produced. So, that is why when one NADH molecule enters the respiratory chain it produces 2.5 molecules of ATP and in the same way when one molecule of FADH2 enters the respiratory chain only 1.5 molecules of ATP are produced as site 1 of energy liberation is bypassed in this. So, note an important point here previously in the previous books also it was assumed that one NADH produces 3 ATP and one FADH2 produces 2 ATP, so, but the values has been changed now. Now, let us discuss in detail about the mechanism of oxidative phosphorylation. There are so many hypotheses, but the most widely accepted as well as the most acceptable hypothesis which explains the mechanism of association between the oxidation of reducing equivalents and the phosphorylation of ADP into ATP is the Kimi osmotic theory which is proposed by the Peter Mitchell in 1961. This theory explains that the two processes that is oxidation and phosphorylation are coupled by the proton gradient across the mitochondrial membrane. So, this proton motive force caused by the electrochemical potential difference that is the negative on the matrix because the hydrogens are pumped into the intermembrane space drives the mechanism of ATP synthesis. Let us see exactly what is happening here. Let us see the structure of complex 5 which is also called as ATP 
synthase complex. We know that it is the smallest molecular motor which is present in the human body. So it is also called as fifth complex of electron transport chain even though it is separately discussed as an oxidative phosphorylation and I already mentioned that it is the smallest molecular motor present in the human body. So location that is the ATP synthase is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane but as you can see it has two components or two subcomplexes we can say F0 subcomplex which is also called as FO actually called as F0 so let us say it is called as F0 F0 subcomplex and F1 subcomplex. So what is the F1 subcomplex? F1 subcomplex is hydrophilic in nature. Let's discuss about F0 subcomplex. The F0 subcomplex is hydrophobic in nature and it spans the inner mitochondrial membrane which means it is fixed into the inner mitochondrial membrane. Any component which is fixed into the inner mitochondrial membrane, remember that it is the lipid one, right? That's the reason we are called as hydrophobic. And it forms a proton channel. And it is made up of a disk of 10 C protein subunits. So we can see very clearly that all the C proteins which are arranged in a circle, which forms the F0 subunit. And what is the F1 subunit? F1 subunit or the F1 subcomplex is hydrophilic in nature because it is not embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane but exposed uh, into the mitochondrial matrix. That is the reason it is the hydrophilic in nature because it projects into the mitochondrial matrix. And this F1 is attached to the FO subcomplex and it is made up of totally 9 subunits. These are 3 alpha, 3 beta, one is gamma, one is delta and another one is epsilon. So it is made up of totally 9 subunits. And the gamma subunit, if you examine very clearly, it is in the form of a bent axle, right? It is not in a straight orientation. That is the reason it is slightly a bending structure, right? It is slightly bent. That's the reason we will call it as it is slightly looks like a bent axle. So the gamma subunit which is slightly bent structure is surrounded by 3 alpha and 3 beta subunits right. And the flow of protons through F0 causes the rotation of F0 complex along with the gamma subunit of the F1 complex to rotate. So we can see very clearly here as the protons are pumped back into the mitochondrial matrix because of their electrochemical gradient, we can see the rotation of F0 because of the rotation of F0, F1 the gamma subunit of the F1 is also rotating along with the F0. So which one is the static one? The alpha beta subunits which are not even rotating. So they are called as stationary subunits. So this rotation actually causes the production of ATP in the F1 complex. So the beta subunit of the F1 complex is called as catalytic subunit because it is the place where ATP synthesis is taking place. So this particular ATP synthase complex as a rotor, stator, molecular motor because it has two functional units. Because one is the rotating subunit, what is the rotating subunit here? FO complex and gamma subunit of the F1 complex are rotating. Only these two are rotating, that is the reason these are called as rotating subunits. What is the stationary subunit? The F1 complex other than gamma subunit because gamma is also rotating which belongs to the F1 subunit. So F1 complex other than gamma subunit is stationary. It is not rotating at all. So that is the reason in ATP synthase we have two subunits. One is called as a static, right, stationary. Another one is called as rotatory. Two subunits we have here. Now let us talk about what is the respiratory control. There is a tight coupling of electron flow and ATP synthesis in the mitochondria ensures 
that oxygen consumption depends upon availability of ADP. This phenomena is called as respiratory control. So, what does it explains? Which means, whenever we have low ADP, low ADP means high ATP, it decreases flow of electrons which decreases oxygen consumption during rest. In the same way, if the concentration of ADP in the mitochondrial matrix is high which means ATP is low, it increases flow of electrons which increases oxygen consumption which means whenever we are exercising, whenever our body demands of oxygen increases, electron flow also increases. Now let us talk about a new theory called as binding change mechanism. So here the theory behind the ATP production in the beta subunit of the F1 subcomplex is proposed mainly by Paul Boyer. It states that the re-entry of protons through the F0 subcomplex causes rotation of the gamma subunit of the F1 subcomplex which in turn causes conformational change in the beta subunits of the F1 subcomplex. This is called as binding change mechanism. By this we completed in detail about the oxidative phosphorylation and in this we also discussed about how the ATP synthesis is taking place by means of a complex molecular motor.